Good morning. Welcome to Mother's Day worship with the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ. I'm Pastor Donna, and today we're celebrating Helen Frazier, uh, a wonderful mother who throughout the years uh, delighted us with her many hats. And I hope that you'll take a few minutes to look at um, some of our members sharing their favorite hats. And I thank you for being here with us this morning. And we want you to know, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you're welcome at the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ in Huntington, Pennsylvania. And now we'll turn to the morning prelude. God has brought us here. The Lord has set us down here, though our bones are tired. Can these dry bones live? Yes, the breath of God will revive us. The word of God will awaken us. Today we come together to experience new life. Let us give thanks to the wild, life-giving Spirit of God.
This morning, we're going to uh, read the scripture from Ezekiel 37, 1 through 11. Now, we send outlines to the people whose emails we have so that they can prepare for the service ahead of time. And if you would like to have one of these outlines each week, please email the church office or Pastor Donna. Um, it's gerald.donna at gmail. Dot com. And now for Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 11, and I'm reading from the message. God grabbed me. God's spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of an open plain strewn with bones. He led me around and among them, a lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain dry bones, bleached by the sun. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Master God, only you know that. And he said to me, Prophesy over these bones. Dry bones, listen to the message of God. God the Master told the dry bones, Watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you, and you'll come to life. I'll attach sinews to you, put meat on your bones, cover you with skin, and breathe life into you. You'll come alive, and you'll realize that I am God. I prophesied just as I'd been commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound and oh, rustling, the bones moved and came together bone by bone. I kept watching, sinews formed, then muscles on the bones, then skin stretched over them, but they had no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, tell the breath. God the Master says, come from the four winds, come, breathe, breathe on these slain bodies, breathe life. So I prophesied just as he commanded me, and the breath entered them, and they came alive, and they stood up on their feet, a huge army. Then God said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Listen to what they're saying. Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. There's nothing left of us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, I almost added the next couple of verses because it, where it ends... Uh, here, it's a little like, sort of like, they had nothing left, but it gets better. It gets better. So let us pray for uh, God's blessing. God, may you bless these words, and may you feed your sheep. May you uh, anoint them with your Holy Spirit that they may be carried out into the hearts of the people who need to hear them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to tell you a joke this morning. I don't usually tell jokes at the pulpit, but I just couldn't resist this one because we're doing Dr. Seuss, and this week we're doing green eggs and ham. So I thought to myself, what happens if you cross green eggs and ham with dry bones, you get a jealous chicken. No, I know, I know, you're just roaring with laughter. <laughs> but let's get serious. Around the turn of the century, someone at Heinz had the bright idea to bring colored ketchup to families in kid-friendly squeeze bottles. Before the colored ketchup campaign was over, 
Heinz had delivered green, purple, teal, orange, and pink ketchup in their easy bottles. But it was doomed to fail. According to Calvin Haddock, a marketing expert who I read about um, on the, in the article, The Rise and Fall of Heinz Green Ketchup, he says kids quickly grew tired of the novelty and moms became weary of finding half-empty colored ketchup bottles in their fridge. For the record, I was not once tempted to buy colored ketchup, which I believe is an aberration of nature. So I feel a lot of sympathy for the fellow in Dr. Seuss' books, Green Eggs and Ham, the one being pursued by Sam I Am. And if egg yolks were suddenly green, Sam would have to chase me for 62 pages to get me to try them. Part of being human is resisting change, especially any change that asks us to accept a truth we would rather not believe. To accept a new truth causes a form of grief. It can cause us to give up long-held personal beliefs or personal practices that have governed our lives like ketchup is supposed to be read. Because new information confronts and criticizes sometimes that which has been our truth, rather than follow the path to change, we close our mouths, as in the case of ketchup and green eggs and ham, or we close our minds in the case of information. In other words, we become the man being pursued by Sam I Am, who refuses to try green eggs and ham, at least until he has no more energy to run from Sam I Am. Now, in the spring of 2020, in the era of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been asked to endure tremendous changes to our lifestyle, working and schooling from home, having to wear masks to protect ourselves and others. I have mine. Standing six feet apart when we do cross paths with someone, ordering groceries for pickup, or if we venture into the store, waiting in line to be counted, then once inside, following the new rules directing us which way to walk down the aisles and how far to stand at the checkout line. These are our changes if we're relatively privileged. There are those whose lives are less stable who will encounter dire consequences rather than inconveniences. That is, they may go from employed to unemployed, housed to homeless, and some of us will go from dead, from alive to dead, but then alive again. It is not surprising then that we as a culture, as a people, as a community are experiencing grief. We are feeling deep loss. We have lost our lifestyle. We have lost our sense of security and safety. We have uh, lost a future that we planned and envisioned. In essence, we have lost control. That we ever had control in the first place was an erroneous belief that has governed our lives, at least most of us, up until now. But now reality has confronted us with a truth. And almost overnight, our lives and our way of life has been pulled out from under us. 
unlike the magician who pulls the tablecloth out from under the place settings without upsetting the glassware, we will have to endure casualties. When Ezekiel writes the prophecy to the Valley of the Dry Bones, he is himself in Babylon, in exile, with the people of Judah. It is an exile that resulted from Judah's idol worship, from their break in the covenant between God and God's people. Talk about change and loss. Their temple is gone. Their homes are gone. Their lifestyle is gone. Their loss was complete. Judah had fallen to the Babylonians. Through Ezekiel, God called his people to account for their idolatry, but now offers this vision of their future, a valley of dry bones resurrected and restored to life by the breath of God. We are not unlike the people of Judah. We are exiles in our own homes. We are our own valley of dry bones. The world around us feels beyond control, and it's forcing us to make changes we have resisted and continue to resist where possible. And so you may ask the question, did we, like God's chosen people, break covenant with God? Is this our own fault? Stop there. While I do not believe God punishes us through illness, remember uh, when the disciples asked about why this man, who sinned that this man was born blind? And Jesus replied, no one sinned. This man's blindness is an opportunity to demonstrate the glory and grace and power of God. But neither does God rescue us from the consequences of our choices. Like many of you, I'm homesick for my kids, my grandkids, I miss my family, and I'm, I'm struggling to cope with what's happening in the world. Like many of you, I am running from Sam I Am and his plate of green eggs and ham. What is that famous line from Star Trek? Resistance is futile. <laughs> if we cling to what was, we cannot grab a hold of what can be. If we get caught in a blame game or we close our mouths to green eggs and ham, we risk losing even more than we have already lost. Because COVID-19 is not here to punish, it is here to demonstrate the power and glory of our God. Now we will get through this together by the power of the Holy Spirit, helping us adapt to the changes forced upon us. Let's stop running from Sam I Am and open our mouths to some green eggs and ham. And if we also open our hearts, maybe like the man in the story, we'll discover we like the change, no matter how strange. We are the valley of dry bones. We are the man being pursued by Sam I Am who wants to try, wants us to try the green eggs and ham for a change to see if we might like it. And this morning, I encourage you to pause. Take a bite. Taste what's good in this breakfast dish 
that has been forced upon us. And even though we can't see over the hills of this valley that we're in, we can rest in the knowledge that the glory of God will be demonstrated through these circumstances. We can rest in God's promise of restoration like the people of Israel. God will bring, will breathe life into our dry bones and then all the people in all the world will praise our God. Amen. Bow with me. Holy God, we are uh, seeing an upsurge of the number of cases of COVID in our own community. And we pray that you will lead us and guide us and, and help us as we're making decisions. Uh, and we just ask for your care and your angels to be with us and around us, protecting us. We pray this for all people, Lord. We pray that the folks who are weary and resisting will um, come, come to the table and, uh, and do uh, as we've been instructed. Lord, we again just pray for the health care workers and, oh, the, the restaurant, the fast food places, the gas stations, the grocery stores, uh, the places that are still open. May you give us the humility to respect the boundaries that are being set for us. Holy God, we pray that you will open the hearts and minds of the people who hear your message. That they may be uh, exposed to the mighty power, the transforming power of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear these prayers. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer, Dr. Seuss style. And so we say the prayer today that Jesus taught this special way. Life giver, Life -giver lover, lover of us, us all, all, upon your holy name we call. Your, your new day come, your will be done on earth as in all realms beyond. We pray this day for bread to live, forgive our sins as we forgive, and give us strength in time of test. Grant us release from evil's death, for all the cosmos is your own, your power of love which, which we, we have, have known, known, the splendor, radiant, without, without end. To, to God, God be the praise. praise. Amen. 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 It's time now in this service when we would usually invite you to give, to pass the plate. Uh, and so we take a moment to remind you that um, the Abbey is uh, still uh, up and going, and uh, we appreciate the many uh, faithful contributors that we've had over the past couple of months, and we just thank you so much for those donations. We want to let you know that um, you can donate on the Abbey website through tithely.com, and uh, you, or you can drop your offerings in the uh, slot on the door on 6th Street, that is uh, the door that's closest to Moore. Or you can mail them, but we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. 
And now uh, we will just reflect on God's goodness and giving back. God of truth and light, we offer you these gifts with humble hearts. We yearn to share your unmistakable presence with all people. And while we often find temporary security in our possessions, remind us that true security comes from our relationship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen and entrust us to be your faithful disciples. In the name of the Exalted One, we pray. Amen. And now, we come to the close of our service. I thank you for being with us today, for watching. And now, hear the benediction. Go out among the outcast and the grieving and speak the word of life and hope. Do not fear, but trust in God's word. Watch for the Lord with eager expectation and be generous with all God has given you. And may God respond to your every cry with mercy. May Christ Jesus take you by the hand and lift you up to life. And may the Holy Spirit build you up in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in passion, and in love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the of, name Christ. of Christ. Amen. Amen. i 